I've changed the strings. I have uh, earlier on, not part of the video, I did, uh, I changed the action a little bit, so I'm going to have to change the intonation. What kind of tuner are you gonna use? My own tuner is a uh, Peterson Stomp Classic Strobo Tuner. I can't say enough about Peterson. They really mean business when it comes to tuning guitars. Quite often I use this tuner, but if I want to do the greatest, most impressive job in the world. Well, I use this fucking guy. This is a Peterson Auto Strobe 490. Whenever it looks like that disc on the inside has stopped moving, that is when the guitar is in tune. And uh, it shows you all the octaves, all the overtones of the guitar. If, for instance, if I do uh, 12th fret harmonic, the pattern is a little bit different than the fundamental. This thing is just crazy accurate. It can detect fluctuations in tuning like to um, 0.1 cent or you know one thousandth of a semitone. Um, do you really need this on stage? Not really. Digitally controlled motor on the inside and it spins a disc. I'm going to turn up the brightness and then uh, when I turn it off it stops and you can see you know as the LEDs die down that is what it looks like on the inside. It shows you the precise tuning of the string on the attack. Some people, when they use like a Boss TU2 or a TU3 or something, they'll hit the string um, and, they, and they say, I want it to be in tune right at the very second that I hit that string. And that's great. That's your playing style, no problem. The problem arises with the, uh, the digital circuitry within those things. It's not that fast. It's not as fast as this. So this kind of thing really gives you the attack. Uh, with a, a traditional electronic tuner, um, it takes, you know, maybe it takes half a second, a quarter of a second or something like that to track the note and to tell you what it is. But by the time it tells you what the note is, that initial attack is gone and you are fooled into thinking that, yes, that is me when I attack the string. It's not. Whereas this guy shows you exactly what's happening at the precise moment of the attack. These uh, LEDs are strobing at the same frequency as the string. Uh, the disc is moving at a predetermined uh, rotational speed, if we want to call it like that. So when that flashing, uh, when the frequency of that flashing matches the, um, the rotations the, uh, of the, uh, the strobe disc on the inside, the strobe appears as if it stopped moving. It's still spinning, just looks like it isn't. Now right now it's on manual tuning. So when I hit E, you'll hear the motor change speed. B is, and that is a reassuring sound, I think. So I'm just gonna demonstrate intonating the E string. Right, there is the, uh, the E string. As you can see, it is a little bit flat. So, I'm gonna tune up a little bit. And right there, the strobe wheel appears to have stopped moving, even though it hasn't. That is good enough. You can actually see that initial attack. So it starts off a little bit sharp, and then it rests. So if you were of the mind, if you wanted the note to appear as an E directly on the tack, you slacken a little bit. There you go. So when you first hit it, there's your E. But I'm intonating this thing. So what I want to do is, uh, is let the note rest because I need time on my side. So that's in tune. Now I'm gonna look at the 12th fret. It's sharp. Now, it's going clockwise, right? So that means the top is pointing this way, which means that's the direction you move the saddle in, unless it's a left-handed guitar. This is an ordinary righty. You can't see it, but I'm adjusting the saddle, moving it back a little bit. Now, when I do that, it changes the scale length of the string, and it also means that the string, uh, when it's open, could be slightly out of tune. So, yeah, so it's sharp now. What's happened there is it's changed the break angle, it's changed the tension. So, going down, and then back up again, I get it to the point where it is satisfying. Wait a minute. Yep, yeah, that'll do. Now my 12th fret. Aha! We can see once it rests, it, it's a little tiny bit flat, which means that I moved the saddle ever so slightly 
too much. So I'm going to move it the same direction that the strobe wheel was rotating in, that counterclockwise direction, meaning the top of the wheel appeared to be going to the left, so I'm going to move the saddle to the left. There's our open string, 12th fret. I am... I am happy with that. In a rock and roll world, it could be well further out there because the musician's gonna hammer on it with their fingers. You know, they're gonna be bending notes. So that is good enough for rock and roll. So let's try a little experiment here. Here's the bass E. You can see that it started off really sharp and then, went, and then flattened out to kind of, you know, where we want to see it, right? If you want to tune it so that when you first hit it, that's the E, well then, you'd slacken it. So you can see there that when you first hit it, that's pretty much in tune, right? But then, look at that, it just falls off. So right now, I want to see how far out of tune this string is. When it rests. So it's around 31 cents out of tune, really. So that is just one of those things like, hey man, how flat is my guitar? 31 cents. And there you go.